Despite what the program says, uh, this was the original title I was given, Practice Influencing Rot Susceptibility, but we'll get round to um, the host a bit in a minute. Um, this is a workshop, so don't sit there for falling asleep, as I'm sure you'd like to. Uh, I'm going to be asking you to, to feed, feed information to me. So we're, we're, um, there's a range of rots on there, which is just, uh, I'll pick down the collection of rot. Um, is, uh, you all know watery wood rot, probably. Um, dry rot. Does anyone know what that is? We're going to ask Phil in a minute. No. You know what that is? With the, the black dots on the. <laughs> the black dots. Ah, the black dots. <laughs> <laughs> Pit rot, gangrene. If you get that one, I'll give you a big kiss. <laughs> I will try. I think I know, but I'm not concerned. <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy I played you. This is pretty rare. And there is a reason I'm, I'm going to show you this. And, and Phil, what's that one? That's too far away from me to see. Okay. 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 Well, Phil's safe because he can't see it. It's uh, botrytis rot of the tubers, which is quite unusual. And it's actually just there for a make a point that these two, these are well-known pathogens, all the other ones, but these two, Glycladium and uh, the, the grey mould, uh, lots of tubers are, are weak pathogens. And bear that in mind when we discuss this, because weak pathogens don't really normally attack tubers after harvest. So, what I want to do, what I want you to do, is... Uh, you missed all the exciting bit, by the way. We have the only joke of the day. So, <laughs> um, what I would like you to do is to tell me what factors you would be thinking about before you harvest or for or at harvest um, that might influence the rots you get in store. So, I want you just on. I've got, and forgive me if I start at the back. Uh, anyone in the back want to um, give me something that will affect or have a, an influence on? Rotting skin set. Skin set. Excellent. <coughs> right. We should have about 20 different things here. So soil type. Soil type. So tell me about soil type. How will soil type affect things? Um, if it was on a, on a, on a light soil, it's not a, the chances are they won't keep as well. Okay, because uh, the, 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 the grainy soil will. Yeah. Of the skin, yeah. Is there some other factor of soil type that might influence things? Sticking soil? Sorry? Sticking soil? Is Sticking soil, soil yeah, 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 that's another factor. Something else? Drainage. Light soils? Drainage. Drainage, yeah. Um, light soils, certainly drain. What about harvest time? What, what happens in light soils? Brooding. Brooding or? Mechanical damage. Mechanical damage, right. So, what bruising? Really getting such an issue on rots, though um, mechanical damage. Obviously, it's light soil, and you haven't got enough in the web. <laughs> okay. Anyone else want to throw things? I've got about twenty altogether. Temperature taking. E excellent. Temperature. Excellent. Let me ask. The, let me ask the audience. Those of you who grow, how many of you actually measure the temperature of the tubers when you bring them in the store? Okay, that's good. That's good. And what difference does it make if you know the temperature of the tubers? Um, <laughs> Sorry, it's not. Well, if it's, if, it's, if it's too hot, obviously you've got to try and bring them, try and cool them down first. <coughs> yeah, yeah, so, okay. What, what else does it tell you? Dew point can have an effect. Say again? The, the dew point can have an effect on it. Yeah, yeah. The, well, you can, yeah, normally warm temperature. The warmer the potato, the less likelihood of condensation. But yeah, yeah, there's, there's, there's the cold condensation. <coughs> cold temperatures bruising. Cold temperatures for, well, yeah. Yeah, for bruising and, yeah. But there's something else as well? A risk of disease development. Mm -hmm. Bacterial and. Yeah, okay. So we've we'll got disease development, disease, spread bruising. Still something else I'm thinking of. One more thing. Seed. Seed. 
seed. Yeah, yeah. your seed before you we <coughs> run. Oh, sorry, sorry, no, no, yeah. Oh, all that stuff, right, sorry. No, I'm, <coughs> right. I'm still on yep. temperature. Right, jump then. We'll come back to seed. Right, humidity. Yeah, hu well, humidity, I'm, I'm not going to consider too much about the, the, in the, the direct into store stuff, but yes, you're right. No, keep, keep on the temperature in the tuber. One more thing it tells you. Yeah, but take that a little bit further. Healing. 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 You know, if you know the temperature of the tube is coming to store, you can more or less guess, guess how quickly that wound healing will occur. Mm -hmm. Certainly, if it's sort of 10 degrees C and above, you're talking between four to seven days before the primary skin set. But if you're down below, much cooler than that, then it takes a lot longer. So that tells you something about handling the stock in store. Mm -hmm. And if you have got damage, um, you'll need to keep the ventilation going for a longer period just to ensure the infection doesn't occur. Excellent. Good. So far, pretty good. Almost as good as the last group, I'd say. But not quite yet. Um, seed, gentlemen, who's who mentioned seed? You did. What about seed? Well, I suppose you check, uh, <coughs> you wash it up just to see what the, what the tubers are like before okay. you... Uh... That's fine. Stop there. All right. How many people in the room who grow potatoes wash the seed before they plant? Okay, that's pretty disappointing. Um, <laughs> but there's a good reason for doing it. Um, watch yourself, sir. But anyone else suggest why you'd want to wash up seed before you plant? I'll show you an example. Just, just, just pop off the presses. <laughs> It's not from there. Anyone identify that? Someone brought it especially for me to see today. No. Cool, Phil, what's that? Is it powdery? No, it's not powdery. Yeah. Oh, the skin spot. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> this is skin spot. And this guy got the seed, planted it harvested it, put it in store, it's fine, and then suddenly in January, a whole lot went like this. Okay, so what could he have, what action might he have taken had he realised that the seed was infected with skin spot? Yes, he could have sold them earlier, but what else could he have done to try and reduce the skin spot? Cool. Yes, that's true. Something else going right back? Send the seed. Second. Send the seed back. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. I, think it, uh, I think it was certified, so that's a good point. Uh, we'll, come, we'll actually come back to that in a second. But now there's something else I could have done. See, treatments. Could have, if you'd known what, was, what the issues were, I mean, I don't know where, what this particular grower did, but he might have just put on um, Rhino or Monstrum or something, but in fact uh, had recognise that the seed was infected then he would have reduced the risk in the store by making sure it's properly fungicide treated. But that requires, to be fair to the grower, it requires quite a sharp eye to see that on the washed up seed. But you only need a two or three spots of this on the, on the seed tubers that you plant and you can end up with this. This particular variety is, uh, is very susceptible. I actually saw a seed stock, 150 tons of seed stock of that just the other day, I was called in the seed. So, okay, so seed, um, very, my argument is, if there's a take home message, Phil, it's actually knowing what your plant is, uh, is pretty crucial. Um, and talk of seed, let's take seed a little bit further. What about, what about <coughs> when, you, when you get your, your seed in from wherever, Scotland, Holland, wherever you buy it from, even Yorkshire, heaven forbid, sorry. <laughs> um, what else should you be looking for? When you, you, you've got the bag, you've opened the bag and you've patched it, can it into a box, what would you look at? What would you look for? Any rocks for the start. Excellent. Yeah. Brownie point view, sir. Rocks. Because. Why? As soon as you put it in the plant, it, you mix it with the rest. Yeah, okay, you've got cross contamination of rocks, and it might be a tip of an iceberg. You might have black oak showing, 
and there might be a lot more in the stock. So that's that thing. And what would you do to try and prevent post-harvest problems if you had rots, apart from praying, of course? Likely you'd grow it out so the rocks would disappear when you went to harvest. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the, the issue is then if you if there's a few, few rocks in the stock, you would keep a very close eye on any development of black leg, and then you think about if, if there was uh, quite a lot of rocks, early harvesting, priority drying in the store. So that telling you something about the risk of that stock, often get an oil rot. Let's not let's be honest about it. It's not uncommon to get the occasional tuber. What else would you do when you found a few rocks? Contact the seed merchant. Excellent. Make them make aware. First thing I would do is identify what it was. So, if it was watery wound rot, as opposed to a bacterial rot, what would you worry about there? What, what, how, do you, how does the fungus and water wound will get into the tuber through a wound. So thinking harvest time, a bit more careful with the, with the harvesting. Okay, we're doing well folks. There's still about 20 more to come. Um, what <laughs> else? It's on farm seed. I think there's still a lot of we seed management on farm seed. That's still on the arrival you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, that's a whole game yeah. in yeah. itself. Yeah. Particularly on the black leg <coughs> side of the thing, just to show you the, so the, this was the forms you filled in, some of you, um, I'll, I'll just skim through it, but uh, these are varieties, <coughs> there's a list of possible rots and things, um, and you'll see actually as we go down that bacterial rots and watery wound rot feature more than anything else, which is interesting, and black leg as well. But pink rot and blight, certainly on those first few varieties, is quite interesting. Um, again, it's important to know whether it is pink rot. <coughs> and if it is pink rot, and if you found, if you'd harvested potatoes and you found pink rot, what would you do if you're a grower? Apart from, I'm not with the seed, I and mean, what would you make a record of? The field. The field it was from. Because as sure as eggs is eggs, Next time you grow potatoes in that field, you've got a risk of pink rot because it's got a very tough resting score. So that's another thing. Another little message is if you have a, if you go, if you have records of fields, okay, you rent them. It's different. But if it's your own field, keep a record of not just which variety you grew, but what you saw on that stock because it can have an influence on the next season. So if you had spraying or you had pink rot or average um, scab or whatever, then it's a risk for a future crop. Okay, um, tell me something else that you should be thinking about in, <coughs> in on factors that affect diseases after harvest. On destruction. On destruction. Oh, effective formation. Okay, okay, can you give me an example of how effective on destruction makes a difference? Um, the separation of the still one from the tumor. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So you need to, and, and that in part might relate to skin set. Yeah, we've got skin set. And what might reduce the separation of the stolon to the, or what increases or improves the stone separation of the stolon from the tuber? Maturity. Yeah, and what does maturity links back to? <laughs> well, particularly getting the fertiliser policy right. Yeah. If you've got the crop beginning to senesce, <coughs> then, then the chances are that the skin set is going to happen and the separation of the stolon will happen. It doesn't always work as simple as that, but that's certainly a factor. So uh, knowing you know, at the time of home destruction how green the crop was gives you some clues. Some varieties, no problem for the varieties. Okay, so I'm going to put fertilizer because well done for mentioning it. If you did, fertilizer is a factor, and if you follow RB209 type re recommendations, then you should be relatively okay. But if you're putting, as some people do, an awful lot more nitrogen on, for example, 
then you're going to have problems at the end of the season. Keep going, keep going. Tell me more, tell me more. Weather conditions. See? Weather conditions. Yeah, ex absolutely. Um, weather factors. Can you just sort of give me an option? It's just in rain. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's an obvious one. So you're going to have issues with lifting. What about the other way? Very dry. Again, too, yeah. Right. And what are the issues there? Bruising. Bruising and... Down. And the damage. Yeah. And <clears throat> okay. A bit more. Let's go back to those photographs I showed you. Why do you think... Why do you think you might get these weak pathogens occasionally? When you've come, when you've been working hard up to Christmas, uh, busy stress. grading, pardon? Stress. Crop stress, crop. stress, yes. And the crop is that, when the crop is under stress, it's a very difficult thing to define, but to give you some sort of idea, if you have a bit of compaction in the field, and the uptake of uh, moisture is poor, or you have uh, a drought stress, or you have a, a high attack of rhizotonia, or something like that, then the crop is under stress, and then that's when these pathogens become more significant. <coughs> because they're in the soil and they're weak. Very rare, so most of you are doing a good job, but just something to bear in mind, if the crop comes under stress during the growing season, then you might have a bit more issue. Um, how about something else? Anyone want to? Date of harvest. So say again, sir? Date of harvest. Date of harvest, yeah, yeah, well done. The other team, others, the first workshop didn't get that. So, brownie points to you. Thank you. Thank you. you can get a job with that HDB now. <laughs> <laughs> date of harvest, but what, what else, what links to date of harvest? Something is that, you know, a late harvested crop has been in the ground longer. So, tell me, which is the almost the only disease that doesn't really worry about late harvest. Go on then, Phil. Dry rot. Dry rot, well done. Dry rot likes warm temperatures and tends to be, if you're cold and wet at the end, it's not such an issue. And there were a few people mentioned dry rot, but almost every disease on, on the pictures or on, on the list, on my list there, almost everything is worse. Sorry, if it's gone. Second. Yeah, almost all the diseases there and listed along there. Almost they're almost always <coughs> worse with late harvest. And why do you think that could be? The front row is very quiet. Cooler and wetter. Cooler and wetter. That means that cooler means that the, the lesions don't heal so quickly. The, the curing is slower. It means that the fungus has had a lot more time, usually fungi or bacteria have had a lot more time to multiply up and contaminate the, the daughter crop. So um, if you do have a particular issue, if you've got black dot, and I know some of you are mostly processing, but if you're a table grower and you have a black dot issue, then timing of harvest is pretty crucial. So yeah, date of harvest and duration in the ground, same sort of thing really. Anything else? Anything we've missed? <clears throat> Let's just talk for a second. Let me just go down this uh, set of data. That's another set of varieties. There's almost nothing over here. And I think because it's the majority of processing, the rots are still pretty dominant. Black leg and rots. Another set here, black leg and rots, bacterial rots. Some people just call them wet rots. Um, <coughs> so let's just talk about uh, black leg a second. Um, <coughs> obviously a, a, a significant issue for a lot of you. Um, when you've got black leg showing in the crop, what do you what do you, what's in your mind about this, the harvested crop? Have nothing. You know you've got problems. So you know you've got problems later. Right? Potential problems later. Yeah. Um, segment. You want to segment it and store. Yeah. Try and keep it separate if yeah. it's an issue. I mean, if it's just the odd black leg, it's not, we're not worried. But uh, if there's a spare bit of black leg, 
Um, and which would be worse, do you think, early black leg symptoms or late black leg symptoms? Late. 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 That's right. Because the bacteria are spreading through the daughter tubes. And obviously, the harvest time, if it's very dry, then obviously you've got less risk than if it's wet. But one thing about black leg, how do the tubers, or where do the tubers start rotting from? Stone. Stone on end, and, or? Wounds or through the lentisodes. So the back, back the bacteria can get in through the lentisodes, uh, which is a slower process. They can get in along the stolon, and they lies a problem. No matter what you do when they go into the store, you're not going to be able to to, to, to dry up those stolon infections. Um, and wounds, of course, if you can avoid, but you need to dry out the surface quickly. So, um, if you see black leg in the field, when it occurs is a factor. If it's early, it's probably not quite so critical. If it's late, it's, it's an issue. And um, what's the, well, the, moment, the message when you get in the store is you've got to handle it carefully. Okay. What sort of level of black leg would you say the field is, is, would be an issue? Yeah, well, that's a very difficult question to answer. <laughs> um, from a seed perspective, very low levels are, are significant, but from a wear perspective, well, I, I'll just I'll put it <coughs> around. If you, if, you, if you planted your crop and then pulled out every fifth tuber, not every fifth tuber, every twentieth tuber, so one in twenty, five percent, you would hardly know any difference. So a black leg level of, of in terms of loss of yield would be quite five percent black leg wouldn't be too serious what would be serious <coughs> would be the spread of those bacteria onto other things and the other thing you can't judge is how many rotten mother tubers may be spreading the bacteria on the harvester and that's something that's why prioritizing a field with black leg for drying is, is pretty crucial i noticed this the difference between loading crops directly in the boxes which have got black leg in the field crops that have gone in Australia's bulkers, elevate this then into the store. The, the change of level of infection is, is, is rapid. It's rapid, yeah. 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 Can you get latent black leg in the um, enticide? Yes, you can. Because sometimes yeah. Yeah, it, it appears that it's dormant until you wash yeah. and pack them. That's right. And then suddenly you get yeah. infected. Well, that, that, that's just one thing. And this was, let's just go back to the skin spot example, which you mm. refers to that. I, I often recommend to, to the wear growers I look after, I don't do much processing, but uh, except in Japan, of course. But <laughs> um, I, this, this guy could have sold this crop. This didn't appear till the end of January, the skin spot. So if he didn't know it was there, he could have, he could have sold it early and it would have been fine. <coughs> um, oh, it's always a good idea, I think, to take a couple of hundred tubers and put them in the warm, in a bag, in a humid bag, and that will tell you an awful lot of what's in, what's in that stock. Whether it's late with black leg or whether it's skin spot, whether it's black dot, and whatever, water or wound. Well, you put more in the bag, you, just, you see something in the bag anyway. Yeah, just 200 tubers in a bag, in a warm place, and uh, it doesn't have to be a hot box for two or three weeks. And if there's something there, the skin spot will show because you're enhancing the symptom development, you're enhancing the latent infection as well. <coughs> Okay, so there's another, well that's a post-harvest thing to do, but you're predicting issues from what you see in the field for later. Okay, any other thing, anything else on, uh, we're getting close to the, uh, to a fairly good list here. The cell structure, make any difference? Cell structure, cell, yeah. No, cell structure. Oh, cell structure. I'm sure it is, but how do we tell? Dry matter, dry matter would give us some clues. <coughs> the thing I want to talk about is, is variety for a second. Um, so this one, this is the previous uh, seed variety, which I'm, we're going to come back to. Skin set, soil condition, soil type, ambient temperature harvest, previous history of the field. We've talked about that a bit. Someone said that tram lines were always worse. <coughs> uh, weather condition, soil condition. So you more or less covered everything. I'm going to just put a little summary up at the end. But what about varieties? How many of you? When you get a variety, okay, you know what Maris Pipe is like, you're all grown up, or many people grown up. When you get a new variety, what, what should you do? 
and do research on it for you. Exactly. So what research would you do? Well, we're ch changing our mind and we're going to... Um, uh, what branch are we going to? This is the Pentagon. I'm flipping out now. Okay. Um, <laughs> but you've got to... Yeah, mm -hmm. some people have said all sorts of horror stories and all the people, different parts of the country have, have said okay. nothing but good things about them. So it's trying to find a balance for... Okay, well, the first thing I would do, and I'll show you, I'll show you an example of a uh, uh, packer I did some work for. Um, I'd go and look at the, <coughs> the plate of variety database. So, searchability so it often goes with skin finishes. Well, it does, it, it does. Nice it does. Finish. It's not, Almost. this isn't the whole story, yeah. but at least it gives you a clue as to some of the issues you might be facing. Um, so, uh, you know, there's, there's things on here like bruising and so on, but there's also susceptibility, this, this is Desiree, I think, so it's not perhaps a good example, but black leg susceptibility and so on. So, that's the first thing I would do. Now, interestingly, Sergi sorry, this variety, sorry, this variety is actually not on the database. So, the, this particular farmer had no idea, and I couldn't have given him any idea, and, and, except I saw some earlier, that this was a problem. But I was certainly doing research. And the, the European database. Yeah, I'm going to show you that next. You go to the European cultivated database, but this particular variety is not on that either. Well, it is on it, but it doesn't have any ratings for skin spot. Um, the, the AHDB data is also in the NIAB handbook. Um, I'm hoping they'll give me a free copy now I've advertised it. So uh, I doubt they will. <coughs> haven't done yet. Um, yeah, so researching the variety is crucial. And to give you an example, this is a, a packer I did lots of. I spent many years walking the fields for them. It's a list of varieties. List of some of the issues. Slugs, pallida, oh, PCN, common scab, powder scab, black dot, spraying. These are the things that were most in their minds. And the yellow highlighted ones are the susceptible ones. That at least gives me a clue about the sort of crop protection program in the field. I need to plan, not just for the field diseases, but for the post-harvest diseases. So um, that's a, always a good policy to, to plan ahead and know what you're facing. Not all that data is available, <coughs> as I said. And in this case, I would be phoning up uh, or looking up at Asian <coughs> and other companies. So. <laughs> okay. uh, but you get quite a lot of clues in, in, in these the information here. So knowing your variety, I think it's pretty good. I'm on the end. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just two minutes. Okay. Well, just let me finish on a summary. Um, there's a lot of things that happen during in the field. Like the, the message for you, I think, is what happens in the field can influence what happens in the store. I think that's. that's I know it sounds logical, but it needs a little bit of thought as you go through the season. I know you're busy. You've got loads of fields to look after, but keeping a note field by field makes a difference. It starts with the varietal susceptibility. The next thing is the seed tuber health. Always a wash up, I would recommend. Um, and I know, I know sometimes it's better to be like that, but I think it's better to see what you're facing. And if necessary, a seed tuber fungicide, properly applied. Fertilizer is an issue if you're putting on standard rates, not an issue, but if you're going over the top. Seasonal weather and soil conditions, you cannot change those, but at least you can take those into account. Crop stress. You know the crops under some stress and you need to handle them fairly carefully post harvest certainly ventilation in the store obviously if you get black leg or something occurring during the season that's a, a warning um, length of time in the ground home destruction technique and crop conditions at home destruction um, conditions of harvest and tuber issues such as dry matter content and damage so there's a fairly good list of things to think about for us and you've been about just a tad worse than the last group, so I'll give you 8 out of 10. Well done. Thank you very much.